Hey, how's it going? Today I am in Huntington Beach with this beautiful setting sun behind me and I'm going to be giving you three hacks slash tricks slash tips for your travel videos today. These are three things that I've kind of pinpointed down throughout recent teachings, recent teaching experiences that I've had and they are common things that keep on coming up when I can tell people these three things, just do this, do this, do this and then the travel videos that others are making immediately get better very, very quickly. The only problem is, is that you need to honestly, like just listen and digest because I, in the past I've told people these tricks before and it's just taken them a while to even kind of get it. They'll kind of ignore it because it sounds obvious, but then they're still not doing it. So I have to tell them over and over again until finally they'll get it. And that's when the magic really, really, really happens. So three tips right now. The first one was a tip that I discovered um, through teaching in the Travel Video Academy, which is my monthly membership program. And people kept on sending in different travel videos that were good in some aspects, bad in other aspects, strengths, weaknesses, but a consistent theme that kept on coming up was that everything was being filmed from eye level. So most people, when they're walking around with the camera, it's just their instinct to kind of hold it roughly here and just film stuff here film stuff there and that's about it. You know, maybe they'll get a couple of different angles, but most of the time they're filming from here. If you ever see me, um, whenever I'm filming, if you ever come on a day filming with me, you'll always see that I'm pointing the camera about from here. It's usually, I'm usually trying to film everything with my screen slightly tilted up. You don't have to if you don't have a tilt screen, even if you have an iPhone down here or a GoPro, but I'm always filming from about this height. And essentially what this does is it puts a constant low angle shot on the world around you. Essentially, it makes the world look bigger, it makes the world look more epic, it makes the world like a more exciting place because you're literally seeing it from a child's point of view. Remember when you were a kid and you're seeing the world like as an exciting, huge place? That's essentially what I'm replicating when I'm filming from down here. It's a great little hack, great little trick to just make your shots look more epic. That's number one. And when I started telling people to do this inside the Travel Video Academy, I noticed that the people who are doing it their videos really stepped up. Tip number two, or hack number two, is... What's hack number two, Daniel? <laughs> so number two is movement. Now, I've kind of developed this rule that I really just want to hammer home. And this rule is either use cinematic movement or just don't use movement at all. So use cinematic movement or don't use movement at all. That means that if you're gonna be moving your camera, pick your movements strategically. Either be moving side to side in a cinematic way, forwards, maybe backwards, maybe up or down. Just don't do the thing where you kind of, you're walking around and you're just pointing your camera randomly at stuff like you're drunk. Like this is not what you wanna be doing and this instantly results in an amateur looking video. Instead what you wanna do is look around you, observe, pick your shot, then move in a way, if you're gonna use movement, that is cinematic. Replicating kind of cranes, replicating dollies, replicating jibs or glide cams, those kind of movements look really, really nice. Either do that or don't move your camera. So that would literally be using a tripod and eliminating all shake, which is absolutely fine as well. It's not necessarily better or worse. Some of the most beautiful documentaries in the world mainly use tripod shots and they look absolutely stunning. So you can just use tripod shots. This is, I mean, it's an overemphasis. This isn't, this is, rules are made to be broken, but this is a rule that I want to set upon you, especially if you're just starting out, because it's gonna help take your videos from beginner, above beginner, very, very fast. It's gonna get you above that plateau, above that threshold, because you'll start seeing the world and picking your shots, picking the movements that you're doing, rather than pointlessly aiming and shooting. The third rule, the third thing is flow. So you want to be, Cutting, this is mainly an editing point because you can get an amazing shot. For example, I actually learned this on the Travel Video Bootcamp Live. This is, a, this is a program that I was putting on in Barcelona one month ago that was really awesome. We had two guys fly out. And the, the, one of the huge things that I learned from the whole weekend was flow. So for example, one of the guys was filming my friend Laura at the table and she was kind of doing like a little dance move, just being silly, like Laura's silly, you know, Laura was being silly. And then my friend filmed her and she kind of, he, he got the shot, 
that was like, she was kind of sitting at the table eating or something, and then she suddenly kind of started dancing, and then she stopped. And then the, in the edit, he had this cool shot of her doing that, but he started the shot before she started dancing. So it kind of, somebody else was kind of eating or moving, then he cut to the next shot of Laura's kind of still, and then she started dancing. And then he cut to the other shot. This is not a great thing to do because it suddenly breaks things up and things are stopping and starting, stopping and starting. You don't want to do that. In your travel videos, generally you want to have a really nice flow. If you go ahead and go on YouTube and look at any other travel videos out there, you'll see that things are flowing together, one shot after another, of things constantly happening. Movements already starting and ending within each cut, people already doing things and not finishing doing things within each cut. There's no kind of stops and starts everything's always constantly flowing and happening. So I told him, hey look, start your clip when Laura is already dancing and finish it before she stops dancing. That way it kind of conveys that she's kind of already doing this and it flows really nicely into the next shot of somebody else already doing something rather than just kind of somebody sitting there and then starting to do something and then it's kind of like jittery and you don't really know what's going on. So those are the three tips, hacks, ticks, tricks, I don't even know what they are to be honest, I can't even speak at the moment, but essentially these are three things that you can be doing in your travel videos to make them better. They're very easy, just go and start doing them and you're going to absolutely smash it out of the park in one. This is Thomas Alex Norman coming from Huntington Beach <laughs> and keep filming, speak to you very soon, bye bye.